Hi there my Ego Pico friends, this digital drawing was requested by one of my lovely subscribers. Once you've placed the sketch into your document, reduce its opacity. Then change the blending mode to multiply so you can see the layers beneath the sketch. Using the ellipse tool, create the body by copying the ellipse and stretching it according to the sketch. To copy the ellipse, press Alt and drag it with the mouse. To stretch it equally on both sides, press Ctrl and drag one side of the ellipse. Select all the ellipses and merge them into a single layer by clicking on Add at the top. With the shapes still selected, round the corners using the corner tool. Drag one of the squares indicating a sharp note and you should be able to round all the notes at once. Make sure you have snapping enabled. Using the pen tool, create a straight line in the middle of the document and apply any stroke color. Next, create a rectangle and snap it to the straight line. You can give it any solid fill color, but I'm using a gradient fill to ensure I don't forget to adjust the rectangle later. Go to Symbols and click on Create to turn this rectangle into a symbol. In Affinity Designer, a symbol is an intelligent object, meaning that when you edit one symbol, all copies of it update automatically. If you can find the Symbols panel, go to Window and select Symbols at the bottom. Next, drag the newly created symbol into your document and flip it horizontally. You can remove the fill color to make it less distracting. Now, whatever you draw on one side of the document will be mirrored on the other side. I'm going to draw the top wing using the pen tool with the options Use Fill and Auto Close enabled. To ensure the symbols work properly, make sure you draw new layers inside the symbol layer but above the rectangle layer. Move the body layer above the symbol layers. Next, draw the bottom wing and adjust the nodes with the node tool if necessary. Start creating details for the top wing using the pen tool and place them inside the top wing layer. Use the knife tool to slice this layer as shown in the sketch. To make a straight cut, press shift and drag. To change the direction of the cut, press alt and drag in your desired direction. I've decided to change the fill color to see better what I'm doing. Make sure you have all the layers you wish to cut selected, so you can change the color of each shape later. By doing this, I'm trying to create a mosaic effect. You'll be the judge of whether it really looks like one. Once you're done, group all the blue shapes. Here I am choosing random shapes to change their fill color. Then I group all shapes of the same color and send them to the top. If you're using the same color palette as I am, you should end up with four groups of shapes, each in a different color. Repeat the same steps for the bottom wing. I continue adding more details using the ellipse tool with gradient fill colors.
Then I create another ellipse, this time with only a stroke color and give it a hand drawn look by selecting one of the ink brushes in the designer persona, specifically the Creative Ink 02 brush. I create a few copies of this ellipse, scaling them down and rotating them slightly to ensure they don't look exactly the same. I also create an extra copy of both ellipses and place them into the bottom wing layer to add a repetition to the design. Repetition is important because it helps to create a cohesive look, making your design feel more unified and consistent. Create the antennae using the pen tool and select the Scribble Pen 01 brush from the pens category. Adjust its width as needed. To create the moon, use the ellipse tool and align it to the center of your document. For the background, use the rectangle tool. You can hide it temporarily to better see the rest of the sketch or feel free to leave this step until the end. Now let's create the mushrooms. First, create a new layer for the stems and use the pen tool to draw them. Next, create another layer for the rest of the mushrooms and draw them. Create another layer for the leaves. Use the pencil tool to draw the leaves, adjusting their width with the stroke width tool. You can adjust the width by dragging the small handles on each node. If you need to create a new node, simply click on the curve. I've saved the profile in the pressure panel to maintain consistency without needing to adjust it for each leaf. For these two leaves, create another layer above all mod layers. Next, create a new layer for the stars. Adjust them as you prefer. In my case, I decrease the inner radius and alternate between 4 and 5 points. You can also add a light fill color to them in this step. I switched off the sketch to see where the mushrooms needed tweaking. Playing around with the nodes and adjusting the width of the stems. To add texture and repetition, I use the pen tool to draw a straight line on top of the body. Selecting the Scribble Pen 01 brush from the pens category, which is the same brush that I used for the antennae. Change the blending mode to add and increase the stroke width. Apply an outer shadow effect to this layer. 
sample the color of the body and reduce the saturation to 7 and lightness to 50. Adjust the other settings accordingly as well. Copy all the groups that make up the mosaic. Remove the fill and apply a straw color. Once again, use the Creative Ink 02 brush to introduce more texture into the design and adjust the stroke width as needed. Afterward, group all the layers with stroke color together and all the layers with fill color together. You can also rename both groups accordingly. Now let's add a bit of depth to the illustration. Here you can see what effect you would achieve by adding inner glow to the main group that forms the mosaic. This glow will appear only around the edges of the entire shape. However, if you add inner glow to each individual group of colors, the glow will be visible around each rectangle. I prefer using the color burn blending mode because it darkens the base colors according to the blend colors applied on top, typically resulting in more intense shadows. Repeat the same steps for the bottom wing. Once you've completed that, add a highlight to the top wing. Again, I use the Creative Ink 02 brush and change the blending mode to screen. Now let's add texture to the wings. Copy both wings, remove any inserted layers and the fill color. Then click Add at the top to merge them into one layer. I could have done this step at the very beginning, right after creating the wings, so that I wouldn't need to delete everything. However, I didn't want to have an extra layer hanging around throughout the entire drawing process. Once you have a single shape for the wings, switch to the pixel persona. Create a new pixel layer and insert it into this shape. Choose the Grunge 03 brush from the Textures category. Initially, change the blending mode to Color Burn to better see where you're drawing. Lower the layer opacity, then switch the blending mode to one that suits your preference. I went for Linear Burn this time. To add more shadow, you can select any basic brush, because later we'll blur this layer anyway. I chose one from the pencils category, because I like its texture and I find it easy to work with. As mentioned earlier, apply blur, reduce the opacity and change the blending mode to linear burn. This step is optional, but you can place the ellipses on top of the texture. I just find it adds a bit more depth to the wings. Add outer shadow to each wing individually as a group to also see the shadow on the bottom wing.
Now let's create a highlight for the mushrooms. Copy the dark blue part of the mushroom and change the fill color to stroke. Switch to the designer persona as you'll need the node tool for this step. Use the node tool to remove unnecessary nodes. To open the curves, press Ctrl and click on the curve between the nodes you want to remove. Next, insert the highlight into the layer to which it belongs. Once again, use the Creative Ink 02 brush to add texture to the stroke. Increase its width as desired. Change the blending mode to Add. Follow these steps for the other two mushrooms. Once you've applied the highlights, add some shadows. Switch to the pixel persona and use the halftone brush 04 from the textures category. Change the blending mode to multiply and create a shadow with a single stroke. To add texture to the light blue part, switch back to the designer persona. Create a straight curve using the Creative Ink 02 brush. I use the screen bending mode for this step. You can either copy the curve to fill up the shape or increase its width. It's up to you. Group the leaves that are under the mod and create a copy. Change the blending mode to Add. Use the Creative Ink 02 brush and increase the stroke width. Next, repeat the same process for the leaves that are on top of the mod. Switch to the pixel persona and add some texture to the moon using the half tone brush 02 from the textures category. One of the final steps is to add outer shadows. First, I'm applying it to the stems of the mushrooms. Since this stem was originally under the mod, but I also wanted a visible shadow on top of the small leaves at the bottom of the illustration, I copied the stem. Then I went to Layer Expand Stroke, which converted the stroke into a curve with a fill color. This allowed me to remove the top nodes and add some where needed while maintaining its shape. In doing so, I was able to create the shadow effect. Here I'm simply grouping together the layers of mushrooms that belong together in order to add outer shadow. The final step that is left is to add texture to the entire design. I found a suitable photo in the built-in stock photos of Affinity Designer. I apply the soft light blending mode and decrease the layer opacity to achieve the desired effect. And that's it! This is how you make this mod illustration in Affinity Designer version 2. I really really appreciate it when you share your ideas for new videos in the comments as, you know, it saves me time in coming up with new content and ensures that I create content that you are interested in. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Ciao!